be to the Most High God. Let's give the Lord God a hand of praise. Amen. Thank you to the Lord God Almighty for giving us strength in our bodies and clothing us in our right minds and giving us the desire to come out to the house of prayer on this first Sunday of the new year. We bless the Lord for he has kept us through the last year and we are thankful that we are faithful in what he's going to do in this year. So again, we give the Lord all thanks and praise and we welcome you here to the Gift from God Worship Center. And just a reminder, we are here on Fridays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 1 p.m. We are located at 24 Colonial Downs Place in Alberta, Virginia, 23821. And uh, just a note, we're still looking forward to our upcoming Bible conference on March the 5th, 2022. So we hope that we are seeing you out at the um, conference, bring your Bible questions, bring your Bible knowledge, bring bring yourself, your spirit, and your KJV. That's your King James Version of your Bible. That's the, the word that we use here to get from God Worship Center. Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. If there's anybody that has an opening song, testimony, all the new scripture, all the New Testament scripture reading, you may do so at this time. Amen. Glory be to the Almighty God. I just want to thank the Lord again for another day of worship here uh, in 2022. Is that what this is now? 2022. Amen. Glory be to the Almighty God. Praise Him. Thank the Lord God for making it through another year. I'll be, uh, what, I'm 52? Be 53 this year coming up, May 20th. Uh, thank the Lord again because, you know, it's to me, it's an uh, acknowledgement that each year of my birthday I'm reminded of my call Amen. the day I was called of the Lord on my birthday Amen. so I'm able to keep up with how long I've been serving the Lord by my birthday Amen. so every birthday 53 will be 13 years Amen. so it makes it easy to keep up with Amen I want to thank the Lord again for allowing me to be here because so many people has passed on. Uh, people that I would have not imagined would have been gone. It's gone. So people leaving here, you know, unexpected. People that you wouldn't even think the Lord had on his call list, you know, for to come get you. So I just want to thank the Lord that I'm still here and um, and being here, being a servant, not just here to enjoy the world doing anything under the sun, but here to serve God. So I just want to thank the Lord again for uh, giving me the opportunity to walk, to walk among His uh, His dirt, to enjoy His wind, to enjoy His breath of life. So I'm very appreciated for uh, being given an opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go. I first want to give my honest to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life as well. And I'm thankful to the Lord God. And then I want to say, I messed up. <laughs> I was well. I'm not ashamed to say I messed up. I was well. I messed up and when I was in the midst of my troubles is when you're supposed to let your faith do the working. Mm -hmm. And then after after the fact I um I walked in my kitchen and I saw this little plaque I had on my wall. And it was talking about about the about your faith, you know. And um, I can't remember everything that it said, but I I just had to say, Lord, I repent, and thank you, Lord God, for what my pastor just said. I'm thankful to the Lord God for another opportunity. 
And, you know, as we minister to others, we minister to ourselves first. So on that note, I'm telling myself that, you know, we always have a choice. And God has given us that free will choice, you know, so it's time, you know, I'm mostly talking to myself, it's time that we can always consider our choices before we, you know, follow through. Mm -hmm. So just a lesson for me in this new year to, you know, guard my choices because knowingly or unknowingly, our choices affect those around us. Right. It affects me, it affects my spirit, mm -hmm. it affects my family. You know, everything has an impact on on the other thing, just like mm -hmm. we see as we study in the word all the mm -hmm. time, that every time we go to a different place, you know, we can refer back to the last place that we went or a time before that. So I'm just thankful to the Lord God for giving me another opportunity to get it right again mm -hmm. and stay in the right way with the Lord God because I believe that the Lord God is the, the truth, the way, and the life. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's no other way for me to go but through Him. And the thing that I said I messed up, it might be small mm -hmm. to other people, but when you're connected to the Spirit, you know sometimes we feel like when we mess up, it's a big, big thing to us because we know that, you know, we're letting our father down. And I don't want to disappoint my father. So Lord God, I thank you again in the name of Jesus for just giving me another opportunity, Lord God, to make the right choice. Amen. And that's the truth of life. I thank the Lord God in Jesus' name and I say amen. 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 Well, we'll praise him. Any other announcements? <clears throat> I have a old and New Testament reading. Nobody else Amen. has anything. I'm looking at um, First Kings and chapter nine, and I'm gonna start reading at verse one. First Kings, chapter nine, and verse one. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire which he was pleased to do. Verse 2, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. Verse 3, and the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built, to put my name there forever, and my eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Verse four, and if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart and in a rightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judges. Verse five, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. As I promised to David thy father saying, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Bless the Lord. Amen, glory be to my God. Amen. That was 1 Kings chapter nine verses one through five. Mm -hmm. He said, he have heard your prayers. He said, I have heard your prayers. Mm -hmm. And that supplication. Uh -huh. So it's always good that we continue to pray to the Lord, even if you think the Lord has not heard your prayers. Just because he didn't answer and tell you he heard your prayer, right. he heard your prayer. Right. It's just a matter of whether you pray it or miss or not. Right. You know, if you praying for something, you know, that's not in his will. But trust me, he hear your prayers. Trust me, he do. I, and I want to say that because of the thing I said I messed up. Uh -huh. Because I I thought I needed something, uh -huh. and then after the fact, I realized I already had it. Uh -huh. 
So, mm -hmm. okay, thank you, Lord. So, <laughs> so it was, it was uh, like, like it was a shake my head moment to myself <laughs> that, you know, I thought I wanted something. And then after the fact, I, I already had it. Mm -hmm. It's just, just weird. <laughs> just weirdo on my part. I already had uh -huh. because the Lord provides. He gives us everything that we need. All right, and that's why I keep saying to walk in a right way with God because in verse 4 he's saying, if thou will walk. If thou will walk. He said, if you will walk before me. That means you're acknowledging him and his word. You have to be in the word mm -hmm. in order to know how to walk before God in the word. Right. So when you walk, he's giving you, he's saying, I heard your prayer, mm -hmm. but are you walking according to my will? Uh -huh. I'm hearing your prayer, but it looks like you're not doing what I'm asking you to do. Uh -huh. So then we wonder sometimes, have God heard our prayers? And he has. <laughs> huh? He has. He has, but you just got to walk in it. He has. And he's giving you an instructions telling you what he's going to do. To keep the faith and believe and trust in him. Uh-huh. <sighs> Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Mm -hmm. Just be like Peter on the boat. Keep your eyes on Christ. And read you verse know. 6 again, please. Verse 6. I'm sorry, I'm a teacher. Y'all forgive me. Bless the Lord. <laughs> um, first Kings chapter 9, verse 6. Uh-huh. But... If ye shall all turn from following me. Uh-huh. Stop right there. He said, if you will walk before me. I heard your prayer. Uh -huh. I I'm ready to answer you. Uh-huh. If you will walk before me, this is what I do. But if you do not walk. So he's giving you this, this segment of what you need to do. And I'm going <laughs> to give you this if you walk. But when you turn out of the way of this walk, then all this stuff just probably just cease. So I always tell people just examine, just examine your walk. Yeah, I hope people people hear this because even me, I tried to negotiate with God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I tried to negotiate with him, man. Okay, verse six. But if ye shall at all turn, from, I don't even know if I said that before. Uh -huh. At all turn from me, uh -huh. turn from following me. Uh -huh. Ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Well, I guess I got to read verse 7. Yeah, go ahead. Verse 7. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them. Uh huh. He's going to do what now? Cut off Israel. So why I keep saying I need to be in a right way with God? He said, if you do it, I'm going to cut the whole country off. Mm -hmm. He said, if you walk out of my way, I'm going to cut the whole mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Israel. So now you got to be in the right way with God just for to keep the rest of the folk. That's right. <laughs> it's like a merge. Uh -huh. like, the, like the Lord saying to the father, or, or a woman, don't thy know that thy can save thy husband? Mm -hmm. So he's saying to you, if you will walk, then I'm going to bless Israel. Amen. And if you get out of order, then who knows what will happen. Amen. Read it again, please. Verse 7. <clears throat> then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them. Uh -huh. And this house, which I have hallowed for my name, will I cast out of my sight. Uh -huh. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. Not just you. He said he was going to cut you off if you did not walk. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut the whole country. I'm going to cut the whole mm -hmm. Israel off. The whole nation. Just mm -hmm. shut, cut the whole thing off. Just for you. And then I'm going to wait for what? Like he said in, um, I think it's 1st Samuel, 2nd Samuel. He said, then I'm going to raise up me a faithful priest. That's going to do according to my heart and my will. Until I get me a faithful priest, I'm going to cut the whole nation off. Mm. Wow. So one person can destroy the whole house. <laughs> wow. 
Like he went to when he went to um was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. He said, Yeah, if there be fifty there, will you not destroy the place? Right. He said, I'll tell you what, if it be five righteous there, then I'll save the place. Amen. Just for five right. <laughs> I say the whole place. I say all your fornicators. Mm -hmm. I say all your adulterers. Mm -hmm. I say all your homosexuals. I, have, I, I say even all of your animal bestiality folks, mm -hmm. if I find five righteous people mm -hmm. in that place, mm -hmm. there's me five or ten righteous in that place, and I say the place. The prayers of the righteous avail The much. prayer of the righteous, just that one or two people will say the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. New Testament reading? New Testament reading. I and mean, Revelation. Revelation and chapter 11. And I'm going to start at verse 1. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. Verse 2. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread on the foot forty and two months. Verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Verse 5. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Revelations, verses one through five. Mm -hmm. Revelations chapter 11, verses one through five. Amen, glory be to Almighty God. Thank you, Lord God. <clears throat> and it said that it's exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. If any man will hurt or touch the anointing of God that walk before God, fire proceeded out of their mouth and destroyed them. Say the same thing. All the way to Revelation. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord God Almighty. There's no greater bliss than a presence quiet like this with you I'm satisfied with you I'm satisfied every tear and all my pain in your presence washed away you are glorified, come on Lord. You are glorified. There's no greater bliss than a presence quite like this. With you I'm satisfied. With you I'm satisfied Every tear and all my pain And your presence washed away With you I'm satisfied With you I'm satisfied We crown you King of Kings. We crown you Lord of Lords. 
you are glorified. You are glorified. You reign upon your throne. Your mercy overflows. You are glorified. Oh Lord. You are glorified. We crown you King of Kings. We crown you Lord of Lords. You are glorified. You are Lord. You are glorified. You reign upon your throne. Your mercy overflows. You are glorified. You are glorified. You are glorified. You are glorified. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Bless the Lord God. Lord, praise him. Praise glorified. Praise him. Thank him. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I'm just so thankful for the Lord. I'm just thankful that I'm still here in the land of the living. I'm thankful, thankful, thankful for all that the Lord is doing, all the things that he reveals, all the things that he shows, all the ways that he makes, just how he continues to keep me and mold me. I might be dangerous for long. <laughs> I might be dangerous before long, and I'm thankful to the Lord God for He continues, you know, to be a presence in my life. I thank the Lord God. Let us pray. Pastor, you want to pray? Or? You can Let us pray to the Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. <sighs> Bless the Lord God. Father God in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord God. You are the beginning and the end. You are the omnipotent creator. You are the lover of our souls. You came. Pastor just talked about your coming, your death, your burial, and your resurrection, Lord God. Amen, God. Lord God, you did all these things for us. For you loved us, Lord God. A love that we cannot conceive of. You know, an unconditional love. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you continue to be a presence in our life, that you clothe us, that you feed us, you provide for us, Lord God. You show us how to love. You show us forgiveness. You know, you give us sympathy and empathy in our hearts, Lord God, and you just teach us you know lord god how to be like you lord god we thank you and we look forward to lord god all that you you're gonna do in this new year all the connections that we're gonna make with the body of christ lord god and we thank you for that and lord god we also stand before you lord god 
as we humble ourselves and admit our faults, Lord God. So we cast them out, Lord God, all of our sins into the sea of forgiveness, Lord God, that you will remember them no more, that we may walk before you, Lord God, and be thy perfect, Lord God, for we will have a renewed spirit in your presence, Lord God. And we thank you, and we bless you, and we, we just think about all the, the people that are out in the world, Lord God, who are not able to come into your house of prayer, Lord God. We are thinking about all those that are in the hospitals. We are thinking about all of those who are sick and shut in, Lord God. And we ask you to just touch and heal, Lord God. For we just acknowledge, Lord God, that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. That a multitude of sins may be covered and come out of, Lord God. So we, we are thankful this year, Lord God, that we may see, you know, Lord God, the renewing of spirits and the confession of your name, Lord God. And we just thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for all you're going to do, all you've done, and all you will do. We ask that you will continue to bless this ministry and bless our pastor, Lord God, as he prepares to come forth to give what thus says the Lord. And we thank you and we bless you. And we say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Um, I also just want to thank the Lord for, you know, all the things that that we didn't remember to pray for, you know, the things that the people may be in need of that we may not have knowledge of, but the Lord God does, for he is an all-knowing God. And we ask in his name that anything anyone may be dealing with in their persons, their lives, that the Lord would just make a way out of nowhere. And we thank him again in Jesus' name. Pastor John. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Almighty God. Thank you again for... Uh, Coming out again to the gift from God Worship Center. Thank everybody for tuning in onto our YouTube channel and our Facebook pages. I want to thank y'all for all things in Jesus' name. Again, I want to thank the Lord for uh, being here, still among the living, Amen. and giving another opportunity to do more than what I did last year. Amen. Um, sometimes people come out and say they want to do better than they did last year. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to do better than I did last year. I'm yeah. looking to do more than I did last year. All right, so um, we are ready to continue with our lesson in Genesis. Um, Y'all can go ahead and have your seats. I want to thank the Lord for all things in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Now, I messed up y'all lesson for the day. <laughs> I messed up the lesson for the day because I was laying down last night and the Lord had given me some more information concerning Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And you know when you get something that awesome, the first thing you're going to say is, there's no way I can forget that. <laughs> and sure enough, guess what? You didn't write it down? Didn't write it down. <laughs> I got four notebooks. No, three notebooks. Uh -huh. I got three notebooks to write notes in. Mm -hmm. And then they write it down. And I got cell phones just laying around anyway. Because <laughs> I just took the notes down out of here. And it was awesome that I had. And now I don't have it. Oh, man. 
Hello. <laughs> I said, maybe the Lord gave that temporary a month or so or so. I don't know. Oh, man. All right. But anyway, matter of fact, I don't got no notes today. No Amen. notes, no scripts, no nothing. Amen. I'm like, okay. They go, oh, that's going to be trouble then. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit leaves God in the Uh oh. Alright, so what we left off on? We left off on Genesis chapter four. Yeah, we started at four. Mm -hmm. We completed three. Mm -hmm. Let me look at this real quick because I know it was something in three <laughs> that he gave me last night. Maybe I might see it. Okay. I know one time, you know, I'm always there. A lot of stuff, y'all, I might say. Like when I say was these days a thousand years. Uh -huh. I'm not saying these days was a thousand years. I'm asking a question. Uh -huh. So I'm hoping that people, when they're watching our videos, because they're not here, uh -huh. so they can't interact. Right. So they, they can't ask a question right. to know if I'm saying, was these seven days or was they seven thousand years? Uh -huh. They're not here to even ask that question. Yeah, but you said we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We really don't know. Right. Because the day, like you said, when I was watching the uh, the adventures, uh -huh. he told the ant man, I'm going to send you back. Or somebody he said, I'm going to send you back. You're going to walk around for an hour, but I'm going to bring you back in 10 minutes. Yeah. 10 it's minutes gonna or feel three like, minutes or yeah, something. Yeah, I remember that. It's yeah. going to feel like they was gone for like... Years even. Yeah. You know. That's why I say a day with the Lord. Because I did the writing up one time when Grandma mm -hmm. passed. Mm -hmm. And she been gone about, I think, five years when I wrote it up. Mm -hmm. And I did the calculations. Mm -hmm. And the calculations came out to like, it wasn't like if you had went to sleep at 10 and you're going to wake up at 7, mm -hmm. it had not completed that time yet in the five years. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like she passed and gone on, but five years could pass for us, mm -hmm. but it could be as if she went to sleep and had woke up yet. Mm -hmm. It could be like six hours mm -hmm. or five hours to her. Mm -hmm. to, to God, you with God, it might be five hours. Mm -hmm. And we looking at, oh, I'm gonna be gone five years now. But to her, it's five hours mm -hmm. or 20 minutes or something to her, mm -hmm. you know, being in the presence of God. Right. The time, because in the presence of God, there is no what? There is no time. God don't work with time. Mm -hmm. He put you on time. Mm -hmm. That's why he said he put up what? The Stars, the moon, and the sun for what? Seasons. Seas. That's for you, not for him. Okay, so we have four. And I just keep looking to see if the Lord will get back to me what I had. Uh -uh. Well, we'll start with four right now. Though. We just go from here. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Uh -huh. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. And what she. That, what that mean? It means they consummated their marriage. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. So it means that they, he consummated his marriage. Or he just said at this time they had a child. No, he's saying they they had intercourse. Okay. Like they connected each other with each other. Okay, read it again. Um Genesis chapter four, verse one. Uh-huh. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. Uh-huh. And she conceived. Uh-huh. And she conceived. He said, Adam knew his wife. It's like Abraham said, he went and he knew Sarah, and she might have brought forth a child. That don't mean that she hadn't knew him before. But most of the time in the Old Testament, people don't have intercourse unless they planning to have children. Mm -hmm. They don't do like what we do today. Everything we do today is on a whole different level of defilement. Mm -hmm. We are more into uh, pleasures mm -hmm. than to bring forth life. We don't look at things like what we see going on here in Genesis. Mm -hmm. We look more to pleasures 
than we do to bring it forth children. Mm -hmm. So if I had to say to people, according to scripture from what most of the things that I'm seeing and even what Sarah said to the angel when he told her that she was going to have a child and she said to him, well, what pleasure am I going to have? Mm -hmm. So she was concerned about not only am I going to have a child at 80 and 90 or whatever age they were, she was like, well, what pleasure am I going to have? I'm this old. So it wasn't that they was to have intercourse or any kind of sexual activity unless they were bringing forth what? Yeah. Children. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have a child on your mind, you was not supposed to be uh, laid up. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. Uh -huh. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, uh -huh. and she conceived and bare Cain uh -huh. and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. She said what? I have gotten a man from the Lord. She said, I have gotten a man. Strange. Why would she say such thing? She said, I have got a man. She said, I have got a boy. She said, I have got a boy. I'm trying to help folks that, that think about this thing on the other level. That said Adam and Eve had children before Cain and Abel. I'm just trying to open up all of the gateways. I'm not believing that now. Mm -hmm. I can help them on their end too. Mm -hmm. She said, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bared Cain and said, I have got a boy. How many women you hear say that when they're having all girls? They will come back and say, I have got a boy. Mm -hmm. Don't mean they didn't have girls. She said, specify, I've got a boy. Mm -hmm. She said, I got a man. So what I'm saying is, did she have children? What I'm saying mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. She said, now I have got what? A man, mm -hmm. she said. Keep going. Verse 2. And she again bare his brother Abel. Uh -huh. And they're saying, that's what they keep saying. Like a lot of other ministers take this thing and turn it and say what? Read that again. Verse 2. And she again bare his brother Abel. That's what they said that Eve had twins. That's what a lot of other ministers say. Eve had twins. Because she had Cain, which was what they said was of what? Satan. So they said that they didn't eat from a tree. They didn't eat an apple from the tree. They had a sexual intercourse. I'm just saying what other ministry said. We don't believe that here at the gift from God worship center. I'm just putting that out there because it's out there. Mm -hmm. Just in case you hear. Mm -hmm. So if you go somewhere and you hear somebody teaching them, you can put your mind back on what you heard at the gift from God worship center. Amen. Keep going. Read it again. Verse 2. And she again bare his brother Abel. Uh huh. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. He was a keeper of what? Sheep. So whenever he got ready to pay his tithe to God, he did what? He bought forth what? His best sheep. His best sheep. Mm -hmm. His best sheep. And what did he do with those sheep? He did what with it? He what? Sacrificed. Mm -hmm. He sacrificed. And I'm seeing back in the Old Testament now, uh, before the Lord gave the law of paying the tenth, they were breaking up their offerings of their blessings for what? Sacrifices. Mm -hmm. They wasn't breaking up their blessings for sin. Because right. they hadn't committed no sin. Mm -hmm. They didn't know they about sin. So they were breaking blessings up. That's why a lot of them ministers on the internet, they can get into tricking you, saying that you don't have to give God a tenth. Mm -hmm. Because they'll take the sheep here that Cain was offering to God as a sacrifice, mm -hmm. and they'll come back and say, well, we're not doing sacrifices no more. Yeah, but he didn't do a sacrifice mm -hmm. with the animal. We did sacrifices with the animal after God gave the law. Mm -hmm. They didn't do sacrifices with the animal. They gave the animal for what? A blessing. Mm -hmm. 
He gave him a blessing for all that the, war, that the Lord had what? Had blessed him with animals. That's the difference. That's why I said when you get into the word of God, you can't be tricked from folks that don't know the word. Uh, can, can we back up? Because something came to my mind when we were talking about um, when you were talking about if Eve had other children. Uh -huh. Something else came to my mind. Like I think it's it might be in Genesis. Mm -hmm. I think when it's talking about the genealogies, because mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of people that they mention. Mm -hmm. Like when certain people have sons or sons that's mm -hmm. gonna be relevant or whatever. Right. But it, it goes back in, in the word and said mm -hmm. uh, they had many sons and daughters. Right. So I just made that connection mm -hmm. when we were talking about that. Right. I don't know if it's relevant or not, right. but it does tell about how mm -hmm. maybe, I mean, I could have found an instance mm -hmm. or something like that. But it, it tells about, you know, different people, mm -hmm. you know, in the word that has, that had had many mm -hmm. sons and daughters. Right. They'll say after addition, a certain year but they're, they're not, not sons and daughters. Yeah. They're not saying it. And then the Lord keeping the scripture, the Bible with this. Mm -hmm. The Lord keeping the Bible with Christ. Mm -hmm. Right. He's showing you how we got here, what he's trying to do. Right. He's not trying to discover the whole universe to you. Right. He's just trying to show you why you in your predicament. Mm -hmm. So he using Adam and Eve. Right. This particular Adam and Eve showing you how you got here. Right. Because I don't believe that it was just them. Right. Not yet. Yeah, it won't just them just yet. So, uh, okay, so, and Adam, Okay, we're on verse, um, verse three. Let's do two again. Two again. Genesis chapter four, verse two. Mm -hmm. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, uh -huh. but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Okay, keep going. Verse three. And in process of time. Stop right there again. <laughs> in the process of time. So here I go, I'm trying to help everybody. Uh -huh. I'm trying to help them even with their theory. Uh -huh. That there could have been more children. There could have been girls. Uh -huh. But scripture pretty much focused on what? Men. Uh -huh. And it's saying in the process of time. Read that. Verse 3. And in process of time, it came to pass. That Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. It don't say what the time was. It could have been 20 years, 30 years, or whatever. The Lord going right to this incident now. Mm -hmm. He's going right to this incident that took place with Cain. We don't know how long it was, right? Mm -hmm. It said that in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought forth of the fruit of the ground what and what uh -huh. a what offering. offering it wasn't a sacrifice uh -huh. it was their offering of their blessings I not see, sacrifices i see something else okay. <laughs> i see something else <clears throat> because it said in the uh -huh. process in process of time, uh -huh. what I see is that um, Cain already knew better. Mm -hmm. I see that he already knew better uh -huh. because of what the Lord asked him. Uh -huh. So something changed in him. Right. Yeah, after time, because uh -huh. they under this curse. Mm -hmm. They under this curse that of the stuff that's what we say is in the atmosphere now. Mm -hmm. The spirit of Knowing good and evil now is in the atmosphere because Adam and Eve loosed it. They loosed this thing in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, it's like everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it can get in you. And it can get on you. And it don't matter who you are. It don't matter how close you to God. Mm -hmm. It still can get on you. Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord said, hey man, work must be tried by what? Fire. Fire. 
to see what sort you are. It don't matter if you're the bishop. Don't matter if you're the apostle. It still can get on you. But it's up to you to know what? To get it off. <laughs> it still can get on you. Amen. You're not exempt what he's saying. Right. Keep going. <clears throat> Verse 3. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an uh -huh. offering unto the Lord. Verse 4. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. So when somebody tell me not to pay a tithe, Mm -hmm. You're almost like telling me not to give my fresh food. Right. Is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, what kind of curse are you trying to break on me? You trying to tell me not to give God my fresh food? <laughs> not to give him the first of my blessings? Uh -huh. the, the simple tenth? Uh -huh. Even though I'm going to do more, you're telling me not to do the tenth? <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, I can't roll with you. Uh -huh. That's all from the beginning of time is to get a law an offering for your what? Your increase. <laughs> you given for your increase that, that you have gathered. And if you and the Lord said, if you can't give me, if you just made five hundred dollars, you can't give me of the your offer? He said, then sin lying at the door. How did you make the five hundred? Mm -hmm. Why you wasn't sick two days? Mm -hmm. Well you could have had what? 320. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you could have had 320. Why are you not giving me your first fruits? The first of your offering. Where the guy on the internet said, I'm supposed to pay tithe to the church. I'm like, okay, keep on listening to them. But those folks going to mess you up. You're going to stop giving God the, the blessings of your hand. The Lord says, not by might, not by power, not by the workers of man's hand, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He influenced folks to do things for you. That's why he said when you give his offerings, he do what? Rebuke the devour. Uh -huh. Keep on. <clears throat> Verse 4. And Abel, he also brought of his firstlings, uh -huh. of his flock, and of the fat thereof. He did what? And bought which one? The firstling of his flock. Uh huh. And not the skinny one. Uh huh. He bought the <laughs> fattest one. <laughs> He bought the best he had. I'm giving God my best I have. Keep going. Verse 4. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, uh -huh. and of the fat thereof. Uh -huh. And the Lord had respect unto Abel uh -huh. and to his offering. Uh -huh. Verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. Uh -huh. And Cain was very wroth, uh -huh. and his countenance fell. Uh -huh. Verse 6. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Mm -hmm. Verse 7. Why are you mad? That's what he's saying. Yeah. Why are you mad today? Mm -hmm. Because it said it was in a process of time, right? Mm -hmm. He said, Why are you mad today? Mm -hmm. You ain't been mad. Right. <laughs> You been breaking, you been breaking a full pain of stuff up here. Mm -hmm. To 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 uh and kneel down and blessing the Lord. You break a full pain of stuff. Uh -huh. Now why are you mad today? And you got attitude. The feel still look the same to me. God said the feel still look the same to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Your blessing still looks the same. He said the check you got last week, you got to get this week. He said the blessing still looks the same to me. So I'm trying to figure out why you mad today. Keep going. Verse 7. If thou doest well, uh -huh. shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest well, why am you not accepted to me today? If thou doest well, why art thou not accepted then? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Keep going. <clears throat> I kind of saw something else, Pastor. <laughs> okay, okay. Go, what, what you got? I kind of saw something else because it says, If thou doest well, uh -huh. shalt thou not be accepted. Uh -huh. And would you just 
finished teaching us uh -huh. is that we supposed to be the first fruit. Right. And if I go back and look, the Lord uh -huh. said he didn't have respect for Cain. Uh -huh. You know, so I'm, I'm looking at at the person first. Mm -hmm. I see the person first. I see uh -huh. Cain first versus his. attitude his, of giving. Yeah, I see him first as the Lord seeing that first uh -huh. before he even consider what his, offer. his offering. That's why I tell people don't get your offer mad. <laughs> yeah. Don't be mad about giving yeah. your offer. Yeah. That's why we said to people one time before when they were saying, well, it hurts paying tithes. I mm. said, you messed up when you said that. Right. You messed up when you said that because something hurt you inside your spirit mm -hmm. because you don't create all these bills. Mm -hmm. You got all this stuff going on there mm -hmm. and you can't pay it. Right. You don't create all this debt. Mm -hmm. You can't pay the debt. So now you're ready to do what? Put sin at the door. You get ready to put sin at the door because you get ready to do what? Halt the tasks. Mm -hmm. You get ready to halt the offering. You're gonna halt the offering so you can pay your what? Your bill creation. Mm -hmm. All those creation, all these bills you don't create it. Then you get ready to halt the offering. And when you haunt the offering, the Lord said, what? Sin land at the door. Right. You bring a sin to the offer, mm -hmm. to the offer. Because of your what? Your yeah. heart of giving. Yeah, and you're messing up your person. Now you're going to let stress and frustration and all these other type of negative spirits enter in. You will haunt your offerings. Affecting your countenance. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Law and mercy. Genesis chapter 4 verse 7 Well Minister John but well, that's Old Testament That's not New Testament Well stick with us for a while then mm -hmm. Well I'll show you <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing changed mm -hmm. Ain't nothing new under the sun Amen. It just changed when, when, uh, when Abraham gave the offer to Melchizedek He was giving it to him He was telling you he, he changed it then He was telling you he was going to change it just like he did with Satan, he said he's going to boost your head, bust your head, boost your head. He just showed you that it's going to be changed. He just showed you Abraham gave the, the offering to Melchizedek, who was a what? An image of Christ. He just showed you that it's going to be changed from the Levites, who no longer going to be the priests. So you gave your offering to the priests. So now it's going to be changed to who? Christ. He's full closure. Nobody that's about God, why are you showing us stuff to these folk? <laughs> hey, why are you showing us stuff to these folk? Mm. They try to say you don't get a tab in New Testament. Mm. He said, well, you pay, don't worry about what they do. Amen. He said, you keep your order. Like you just went over with David. Mm -hmm. He said, if you will walk mm -hmm. in my statutes and keep them, mm -hmm. then I bless what? All of Israel. He said, what? You do it. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about the rest of these folk. <clears throat> Keep going. Genesis chapter 4 verse 7 If thou doest well uh -huh. Shalt thou not be accepted uh -huh. And if thou doest not well Sin lieth at the door Is it you, 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 Are you saying that Are you saying that I'm not able to bless Is, is, you, is that what you're saying mm -hmm. Is you saying that I'm not able to keep your fields full are you saying that to God? Mm -mm. Are you saying I'm not able to keep you above waters mm. so that you can give your what? Your little tenth? <laughs> Just a little portion. <laughs> your little tenth? Are you saying I'm not blessing you to give you the tenth? To give the tenth? Is that what you're saying? We're in conversation now. We're in conversation now with God. Are you saying I'm not able? That should be a recording. And if I'm not able, then sin land at the door. Uh -huh. How am I not able to keep your offerings up? Mm. Wow. You don't get that counsel with God. Mm. Just like Job. Even though you lose everything you had and some of your friends were glad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't get in counsel with God, man. Mm -hmm. you, you're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't get in counsel with God about your finances. Uh -huh. Because every man work must be tried by fire. Sometimes he's just trying to do what? Purify you. Amen. Trying to purify you for something else. <gasps> That's for me. Huh? <laughs> That's for me. You're trying to purify you. I got a lot of work for you. <laughs> I first got to get your mind off Jesse Bam, though. Mm -hmm. Once I get your mind off of these things of the world, I can work with you. Mm -hmm. Can't work with you. You got too much worldly stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Want too much uh, money and stuff going. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 4 verse 7 uh -huh. If thou doest well Shalt thou not be accepted uh -huh. And if thou doest not well Sin lieth at the door uh -huh. And unto thee shall be his desire uh -huh. And thou shalt rule over him uh -huh. Read it again The whole thing Yes, 7 Verse 7 if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Mm -hmm. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at mm -hmm. the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. Uh -huh. And thou and thou shalt rule over him. Uh-huh. What should make out of that? Is it saying that like what you was just saying? Uh -huh. Like I stop giving my tithes, uh -huh. not me. I'm just saying, as uh -huh. an example. So you stop giving your tithes because your bills overtook you. Uh -huh. So it's saying that your bills were ruled over you. Uh -huh. Now all you're doing, all your your labor is not uh -huh. to bring you joy and happiness. It's uh -huh. to satisfy the the, the, the stress of the bills. Uh, uh. Right. Yeah. Or what a sin could overtake you. Mm -hmm. Or sin just overtake you. And when the sin overtake you, it's going to do what? Rule over you. It's going to rule over you. Yeah, that's why I was just saying yeah. that. What you had just said, yeah. like that little <laughs> block needs to be recorded to, you know, play back for people. Uh -huh. To remind them that this is the Lord saying, am I not able? Right. Are you saying that I'm not able right. to right. do these things for you? Right. Because you're, you're going to keep your... I guess covenant with me and right. give, you know, the the tenth right. or whatever, the tenth of you, the uh -huh. tenth of your time, the tenth of your finances, right. the the first fruit right. or whatever you bring in. And are you saying that God is not able to, you know, provide. restore right. or provide? Right, to provide for you. Is that what you're saying? Wow. Don't let me hear. You. Right. Don't let me hear you saying I ain't going for. It. I've been in this thing 13 years now. Right. I ain't going for it. I seen too many blessings come up behind giving your tithes. Right. If it was for me giving my tithe, I couldn't be in this building. All right. Because I do not, my paycheck do not cover us. Pastor, that's why I don't know what my problem is because if anybody know that, it's me. Yeah, my paycheck don't cover us. It's me. Money. Yeah, we don't Man. Make that. Uh -uh. Not to be here. It's the blessings of the Lord. Amen. Your paycheck can't get you nowhere. It's a paycheck of what? What did it say the definition of that thing or just over book or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they were saying with that thing. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. I try to make man multiply. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Uh -huh. And it came to pass. Mm -hmm. When they were in the field, uh -huh. that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, uh -huh. and slew him. Uh -huh. Verse 9. What ruled over him? Sin. Mm -hmm. The sin that was in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? Uh -huh. And he said, I know not. Mm -hmm. Am I my brother's keeper? Uh huh. <laughs> he just got smart with the Lord. Uh -huh. the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, I ain't even need to add that in today. <laughs> I'm like, how you got here? You said those things gonna rule over you. And you get not out. Are you talking with God? You get smart with 
You're like, what? Am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> That's why I said I believe that the Lord was talking to all of them back then uh -huh. because they all, and you can see where some of them had interactions, uh -huh. you know, wow. with God. When he talked with them, they talk back smartly. Uh -huh. Like folks do today, they want to talk back smartly. Uh -huh. I'm like, okay, I'm like, all right, let me keep quiet. Mm. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 10. <clears throat> and he said, What hast thou done? Uh -huh. The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Uh -huh. Verse 11. And now art thou cursed from mm -hmm. the earth, mm -hmm. which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from uh -huh. thy hand. Uh -huh. Verse 12. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Same thing he did to who? Adam, Eve, and the serpent Satan. Mm -hmm. Same thing. A what? Curse. A punishment. Mm -hmm. Read it again. <clears throat> Verse 12. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Uh-huh. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. So the three characters that we have discovered just in Genesis is under a what? Curse. A curse. And a punishment. All your characters you see right now is under what? Punishment. And it's getting ready to do what? Trickle right on down the hill. Everybody's under punishment right now. Mm -hmm. Can't nobody keep the order of God. Mm -hmm. That's why he said in scripture, he put that scripture there to do what? To press mm -hmm. towards the mark of the high call of God. Mm -hmm. So now you gotta press towards the thing. Why? Because sin in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Sin is in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna cause you to what? Fall. Mm -hmm. That's why he said you have to do what? Renew what? Renew your strength. Keep going. <clears throat> Verse 13. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Uh -huh. Verse 14. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, mm -hmm. and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Uh -huh. Verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Mm -hmm. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him mm -hmm. should kill him. Uh -huh. Who are you talking about? Who came? No, who the Lord talking about? Who both of them talking about? He said, if any man find me, they're going to slay me if they see me. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking about? Anybody. Ain't nobody on the earth, though. <laughs> so who are you talking about? Because it, it is. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. We have more evidence. Mm -hmm. to prove what I'm saying, mm -hmm. that there was other people, then people can say that there wasn't other people. We'll get to that as we go, though. All right, which verse one? Uh, verse 16. Uh -huh. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord mm -hmm. and dwelt in the land of Nod, uh -huh. on the east of Eden. Uh -huh. Verse 17. And Cain knew his wife, mm -hmm. and she conceived, mm -hmm. and bare Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Uh -huh. Verse 18. So we saying back in, um, Genesis 4, 1, Genesis 4, 1. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 mm -hmm. 
And Adam knew Eve, his wife, mm -hmm. and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man I from the Lord. I have gotten a man now. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that she could have had what? Other children. All. All girls. Girls. Mm -hmm. And she could have. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just want to put that out there for folks that look at this thing the other way so they can go back and everybody can examine what? Themselves. Keep on. <clears throat> Verse 18, Genesis chapter 4, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mahu, Mehajel, mm -hmm. and Mehajel begat Methusiel, mm -hmm. and Methusiel begat Lamech. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, and Lamech took unto him two wives. Mm -hmm. The name of the one was Ada, mm -hmm. and the name of the other, Zillah. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. Now, he took up what? Two wives. Now, okay, hold on. Go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter three. First Timothy chapter three, verse two. This is why I think the Lord put this here in Timothy. Because in Old Testament, the people used to have what? Multiple wives. Multiple wives. Mm -hmm. So that's why he was specifying mm -hmm. that the bishop need to be the husband of one wife, not that a woman cannot be a bishop or an apostle or a deacon mm -hmm. or a deaconess mm -hmm. or a usher. Or whatever, or pastor. Mm -hmm. He's not saying that. What he's saying is, under the church, you need to have one wife. Mm -hmm. So you can concentrate on just her. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to take away what? The multiples. Read that for me real quick. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. Uh -huh. A bishop then must be blameless. Give me verse 1. Verse 1. This is a true saying. Uh -huh. If a man desired the office of a bishop. What's the office? A uh, office. He's not a bishop. He's taken up a office. Mm -hmm. He's taken up a secretary office. Mm -hmm. He's just putting himself in the office so that people can come to him for what? Instructions. Mm -hmm. Read it again. Verse 3, verse First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop. If a man desire the office of a bishop. Mm -hmm. It's not saying that a woman can't be a bishop. Mm -hmm. He said because of you men want to have all these wives. Mm -hmm. And women don't normally what? Do that. Because we find through all scriptures, women can't even commit what? Adultery. Mm -hmm. So if it's a man and you desire the office of a bishop, you need to have what? One wife. One wife. Mm -hmm. That's all he's saying. Mm -hmm. Read it again. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, uh -huh. he desireth a good work. He desire a good work. I'm going to give him some instructions, though. Keep going. Verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless. Uh -huh. The husband of one wife. The husband of one wife, not multiple women. Uh -huh. So if you're a Muslim and you got multiple wives, we know you're not in the church. Uh -huh. You're not in the church of Christ. Right. You gotta be under something else. Mm -hmm. Because in order for a man to be a bishop under the church, he has to have what? One wife. One wife. Mm -hmm. So we know when you say you got multiple wives, we know you do not what? 
follow Christ. You don't follow Christ. Mm -hmm. You can't be. You can't be following Christ and keep the order. Right. So you have to, uh, what? Well, I don't believe in Paul's teachings. Well, I don't believe in New Testament. That's why they stay what? With the law. They stay with the old law. Mm -hmm. Give me one more before we go back. Verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless, uh -huh. the husband of one wife, uh -huh. vigilant, sober, uh -huh. of good behavior, uh -huh. given to hospitality, apt to teach. Go to verse 11. Verse 11. Even so must their wives be great. Why? Because you have to marry what? One man. Equally yoked in Christ. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. You have to be equally yoked in Christ. So if I marry a wife, she has to have what? The same standards mm -hmm. as the bishop. Mm -hmm. Just giving them to you right here. Mm -hmm. You just said a woman got to be the exact same thing. Read it, please. Verse 11. Even so must their wives be great, not slander, slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Uh -huh. Keep going. Verse 12. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Let them do the same thing. Mm -hmm. All you men. I don't want none of y'all being up in here defiled and have the church what? Out of order. You're going to put the church out of order mm -hmm. because if somebody else see it in the congregation, that hey, the deacon got two wives. Mm -hmm. uh, no, the bishop got two wives. Now I'm going to get two. And he married both of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get two now. So the Lord said, no, not in the church. Right. Can't do that in the church. Mm -hmm. In the church, you got to be the husband of one wife. Right. Not saying that a woman can't be a bishop. Right. It's saying if you're a man, mm -hmm. this your order. Mm -hmm. Back to Jim. Genesis chapter 4. Were you at 20? Uh, we can start with 20 because it's just giving the names and stuff. Anyway. Yeah, I think I'm at 20. Uh -huh. No, I'm at 19 because okay. we stopped at the two wives. Okay. Verse 19. And Lamech took unto him two wives. Uh -huh. The name of the one was Adah, uh -huh. and the name of the other, Zillah. Uh -huh. Verse 20. And Adah bare Jabal, mm -hmm. and, verse 20. And Adah bare Jabal, mm -hmm. he was the father of such as dwell in tents, mm -hmm. and of such as have cattle. Verse 21. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. Mm -hmm. Verse 22, and Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, mm -hmm. an instructor of airy artificer and brass and iron, mm -hmm. and the sister of Tubal Cain was Naamah. Mm -hmm. Verse 23, mm -hmm. and Lamech said unto his wives, Adah and Zillah, mm -hmm. hear my voice. Mm -hmm. Ye wives of Lamech, hear, hearken unto my speech. Mm -hmm. For I have slain a man to my wounded, mm -hmm. and a young man to my hurt. Uh -huh. Verse 24. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. Uh -huh. Some people try to say he killed Cain because of what he's saying here. As if he killed Cain himself. But I don't know if that's true or not, but... That's what a lot of people are saying that they believe what happened in reason that he's saying what he's saying. I think he's saying this because he's uh he's a this he's Cain's son, right? Mm -hmm. He's Cain's son. So, you know, I I see the the bloodline. Mm -hmm. I see the same mm -hmm. thing as was put on Cain is like on his mm -hmm. bloodline. Uh -huh. It's sort of like, um, you know, like mm -hmm. if a family is protected or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, and they go down through the ages, right. you know, and everybody remember that, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you see somebody, you say, oh, this person, mm -hmm. like, I, I can't yeah, get a good example. So you're trying but, to say, he's saying if Cain, if you can't kill Cain, you can't kill me either? Right, so something to that effect. So he said, if, if this, if somebody killed my father, 
they gonna have um, this penalty on uh -huh. them or something. Uh -huh. So if they kill me, they're gonna be seven to ten seven. Right. Is that what he's saying? They, so he's saying it's increased. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. Okay. I have never looked into it, but anyway, mm -hmm. I know I heard a lot of people say that they felt like he had killed Cain based on what he was saying. Read it again, real quick. Mm -hmm. Let the spirit work. Verse twenty-four. D twenty-three. Verse twenty-three. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zella, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding. He said, I have did what? Slain a man to my wounding. He said, He killed. Is that what he's saying? Mm hmm. He said, I have slain a man. But like I said, the deer is still in the air. I don't know which one is which. But he was saying that he has killed a man to my wounding mm -hmm. and a young man to my hurt. Mm -hmm. So maybe it couldn't have not been Cain or something. I don't know. He said it was a young man. That was, didn't sound like to me. He was younger than he was. Mm -hmm. I, I see that he's saying that he he's hurt that he had to do that. Uh -huh. Like maybe sort of something like self-defense or something. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I had to do this thing, mm -hmm. and it hurt It hurt me that I had to do this thing. Uh -huh. And it was like a... Well, was it Cain, though, what he's saying? Is it is it possible? I'm not saying that it is. I'm not saying that it's not, but is it possible that it could have been Cain? Mm -hmm. Read it again. Uh -huh. 23, read it again. Verse 23. And Lamech, Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, uh -huh. hear my voice. Ye wise and Lamech, hearken unto my speech. Uh -huh. For I have slain a man to my wounded, mm -hmm. and a young man to my hurt. Uh -huh. Verse 24. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. Uh -huh. I'm going to study this some more. Mm -hmm. I'm going to study it some more. We'll come back closer again. Let me put a mark. Verse 25. Uh -huh. And Adam knew his wife again. Uh huh. Uh oh. And she bare a son. So we got what? We got Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. We got Cain and Abel and left the house. Mm -hmm. They got children. Mm -hmm. And Adam and Eve ready to do what? Bear another child. Mm -hmm. Well, now Cain and Abel, Hank, or Abel uh, died. Let's read what she gave me to say. Verse 25. And Adam knew his wife again, uh -huh. and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. Uh -huh. For God, said she, uh -huh. hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, uh -huh. whom Cain slew. Uh -huh. Verse 26. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son. Uh -huh. And he called his name Enos. Uh -huh. He said that she did. He did not have daughters. No. It did not say that he did not have daughters. But what it is saying is that he had. Read it again. A uh, um, son named Enos. Verse twenty-six. And to Seth, mm -hmm. to him also there was born a son. And he called his name Enos. Mm -hmm. Then began man to call upon the name of the Lord. Then became men to what? To call mm -hmm. upon the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. What was the rest of them doing? Everything mm -hmm. on the sun. Mm -hmm. Everything on the sun. Because of what? Sin was where? In the, in the atmosphere. Yeah, the atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, sin was in the atmosphere. So after Seth came, back to the land again, because the Lord already made a what? A promise mm -hmm. that what? That through her seed, he going to what? You going to bruise his heel, or he going to burst your head. So <laughs> through his seed line, mm -hmm. So that's why she said that, that the Lord had 
gave me another man, and after him now, men have started to do what again? Return to Christ. Turn back up to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Men start calling back. Read that one again, last one. Verse 26. And to Seth, to him also, mm -hmm. there was born a son. Uh -huh. And he called his name Enos. Uh -huh. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Then began men again to call upon the name of the Lord. After what? Self. Now, if you was a follower of self, then you will be called a selfinite. Right? If you was after Cain, you would have been called a what? Canaan. A Canaanite. Mm -hmm. If you was after whatever name you were, that's why we try to tell people, when we say we Christians, we are after our what? Father. Father's name. Who our father? Jesus Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say we what? Christians. We just follow it after our what? Father's name. That's all we don't. Mm -hmm. That's all we don't. Any questions so far? We're going to end right here. We're going to pick up the next chapter uh, on our next lesson. All right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory be to our God. This is a good chapter. Amen. Amen. Uh. Your next one's gonna be good though. All right.